you know, we both started out writing a lot about these issues, masculinity, guy stuff, how to have better relationships, how to how to just be a better man in general. And and that's ultimately what the the whole manosphere came to be, which is basically like raise your status, right? Become a better man, live a better life, and things will, will, will become better in that way. Uh, do you feel like those issues that we addressed years ago like that, do you feel like they're more important, less important, you know, more critical? Do you ever think about writing or talking more about those things? Like, is there, how, how do you, how do you even look back on that time too? Like, what, how do you see that? How do you reflect on that? Well, the message of the message is more important than ever, more needed than ever. There's the problem is the gap is wider than ever. It used to be the, the way it used to work is if you were a man and you were a little younger and an older guy said, hey, here's what you should do. You would say, "Whoa, that was good. And then you just jump right over the bridge. Totally. Wow. Makes sense. Why didn't anybody ever tell me this before? Holy <laughs> shit. You get this download and then you would impact it. Now you got to deal whole generation. That's why I don't talk about these issues a lot is that won't work. That's too hard. The, so the bridge is so far now. So they need the information more, but the bridge is so far that they're not actually going to cross the bridge. They're going to tell you why it doesn't work. Then they want to treat it like a debate society. I've had that in my DMs because I always try to help people if they, if they DM me. And then I quit doing that because I'm like, they just it's an arguing society. Hey, I'm not, it's not a debate society. If you tell me, Hey Mike, what should I do? And I say, go buy that book and read it. <laughs> and you ask me, well, what's the book about? We're, we're, we're done now. We, we don't have a relationship anymore. This, this is, oh, this is over for us. Whereas before, especially if, if I went been younger and had access to guys like us, I'd be like, okay, thanks dude. And then maybe a month later, Oh, I read this book. I tried this thing. What do you feel about that issue? That's how you can tell. That's actually when I do consulting and my stuff has been closed forever. The way that I can tell if you're putting in the work or not is if you're putting in the work, your question is very specific. Your question is, hey, I did this and then this result happened. Okay, then we can troubleshoot it. If you're not putting in the work, it's very vague. How do I be successful? How do I become a better public speaker? I don't know. Do you go to Toastmasters? No. Do you practice speaking in front of a mirror? No. Okay, you're, you're, you no longer exist to me. We're, you know, everything is about, and that's as I become older, boundaries become so important. It's like, okay, we're just, you don't exist to me because you're wasting my time. You have access to someone who has, by any objective metric, achieved a lot and is, is, is accessible in a way that almost no one is. And you're going to waste my time because you don't respect your own time. That's fine. You cannot respect your own time, but you and I, because I, I, the other day somebody said, do you really block people on Twitter when they ask stupid questions? Yes. I said, of course, of course. If you're asking me, how can I be a better public speaker? You are blocked because you're not going to Toastmasters. You're not doing anything. You're just, you're wasting your time and now you're trying to waste my, of course I do. That's as you get older. When you have kids, you have to be more respectful of boundaries because if you're spending time doing A, that's time unfortunately is zero sum. If you're spending time on A, then that's time that you're not spending on B, and then you have to do a integrity check and decide if that's how you want to do it. I think that there is no surprise why successful people end up writing and talking and thinking and working on time management, personal uh, energy management, uh, boundaries, uh, stress relief, uh, mindfulness, organization. Have you seen an influ uh, uh, an in in an uptick in the importance of those things in your life as you've gotten older? Why is it common to everybody who gets to that point? I have my ideas. Interested to hear yours. Well, boundaries. I don't think most people ever learn healthy boundaries because they're you know the, I've always been very quick to kind of cut people out of my life, and people would find that kind of cruel. But I never knew it, just like I never knew what the word mindset was. I never knew what the word boundary was until maybe five years ago. I just knew that if, if you were acting a fool, I didn't want to be around that energy. I just knew it wasn't being healthy in my energy. And then you realize, yeah, a lot of it is about drawing boundaries that are healthy 
and then finding if people respect your boundaries or not respect your boundaries. And you realize most people are just, honestly, it's just goo energy, spaz energy, <laughs> what you call it, where, buddy, you don't have anything going on. You're just a wreck, a nervous wreck. And you're not trying to change that. You're not trying to modulate that. You're not doing the cold. So, for example, if you read Cernovich and you're not taking cold showers, then, like, you don't read me. I, I don't have anything for you. I don't want to talk to you. Everybody knows that I have been doing ice baths for, for however long and contrast showers for, like, however long. And everybody knows it doesn't matter how much you do cold showers. It always sucks, which is the point of it. Everybody knows that if you do the cold plunge, it sucks. Always. But that's why you do it, because you're conditioning your body to know to know that one, it's going to be unpleasant, but two, like you're not going to die. Right. That was a, a mantra that I developed very early on where does it suck? Yeah. Are you going to die? No. OK, then do it. There's zero risk that you're going to die. Do it unless you you know check your doctor about your heart, <laughs> blah, blah, blah. So they're not doing they're not doing that conditioning. And you have to keep doing that, doing that condition throughout your life. And then you have to find – that's the irony of all of it is that the better you get, the harder you have to work because you're so – maybe numb isn't the word, but you're so acclimated to things that others find hard that now you have to find something harder to do, right? So it never ends, and it becomes harder in a way, but it becomes more – fulfilling in a way too because you can see how far how far you've journeyed the next peak this is something i'm working on right now with my i have an executive coach every monday morning 9 a.m and we talk and we plan we strategize and and he's really helped me figure out like where my priorities need to be and how to manage my time and how how to basically increase my leverage right because i'm already at 150 percent bandwidth period there are Sorry, guys, there's 25 guys out there right now who I feel bad that I haven't responded to, that I know I need to. And then there's 10,000 more people just like that. I'm completely maxed out time-wise. So it's really about finding leverage. And, and some now also for me, it's about looking forward to the next peak. Uh, you know, Mike, you've, you've experienced this. I'm sure you, you go through a period of growth, high energy, huge output, and then the world sort of adjust to that. And then you need to sort of recalibrate, reconsolidate. Um, have you had experiences like that? How do you reconsolidate? How do you, how do you reorient yourself to, to like, and, and how long are these periods, right? Ha, to, to look towards the next peak. Cause we're, you're never going to get to the very, very top. There's always another one over there. So how do you mentally, emotionally, spiritually, reorient yourself to the world that has now changed around you because you yourself have changed in a way i think less in terms of peaks and more in terms of life right i've lived probably three or four lives in mm -hmm. this life i've you know here i did this thing here i did that thing and i was a completely different person if this what i'm going towards now is a completely different chapter in my life so rather than think of it, because I think chasing peaks is like chasing the dragon. So if I were your executive coach, I would be analyzing the language that you use. And I would want to get to the to why you use peak. Where did that concept come from? Metaphorically, why is that embodied in your brain? Maybe that's working for you. Maybe it's not working for you. But you always want to consider when you use language, the language is a representation of a metaphorical embed or an archetype in your mind. And then you ask yourself, okay, this is peak is a concept that's in my mind and it's influencing me on an unconscious level and, a, and also on a conscious level. You know, where does that come from? Metaphorically, the one I live by more is I've always said that I wanted to be, maybe not always, but I, I put this together a long time ago, an interesting character in, say, a Tom Wolf novel. And I've <laughs> so far exceeded that. Yes. But the idea is... I want to live an interesting life. I want to experience what other people don't experience. I've stories. If I told people, they wouldn't even believe them. They, they would say that, that no way in the world that happened. So I don't even tell my stories. I actually downplay what I do and try to make it look like I'm boring and everything. So for me, 
the metaphor is we're all living a story, a book, a movie, a poem, a haku, figure out your metaphor. And I just want to live a new story. And how do I live a new story? I write the new story. I write a new story for myself. So in this phase of my life, I'm, I'm just much, and it's weird because it's paradox. I probably, I have more to say, but I'm saying less, right? I'm tweeting less. I'm doing very few podcasts of, of my own. I don't usually attend other people's stuff. Like Tim cast. I, I was invited months and months ago and okay, I guess I'll go do it. Even though I feel like I have more to say, I just feel less drawn to that. And I feel more drawn to inwardness, the, the spirit world, the, the realm of myself, the, the realms that we don't fully understand. And that's sort of going to be my next, you know, few years of my life. That's going to be the focus for at least the next three, your chapter of your life is usually three to five years, right? Because if you date a girl and you love her, if you don't get married, that's going to wind itself out in what, 18 months to three years, maybe five if you're a bad person and you take, <laughs> you know, her five years of her life, but you don't ever, you know, date her for a long time. You know, the idea is that, that, but that's a chapter and you're with the whole person living a whole life. You've gone on these trips together. You've experienced these things together. With a career, people don't have 50 year careers anymore. And you're like, okay, I had a job. I started off doing X about three to five years. And then in terms of your own self authorship, I went through the whole big jack thing. That's why when people go, oh, you look old or you got fat or whatever, it just it has no emotional resonance in me. It's like, I've, I've been the big guy. It was fun. I liked it. It's not overrated. Every guy, <laughs> it's not. I, I stand by my writing that every guy should get big once in his life because anything you think about what the muscle thing is like, you have no idea unless you've been it. Everything people say on the internet, oh, women don't like that. They find it gross. Sure, go out in public and have women come up to you and squeeze your arm. And then you can tell me about whatever bullshit you think about that. <laughs> but then I was just kind of over it. I was like, okay, like I'm a big guy. Then politics. Okay. I've, I influenced the presidential election in 2016 to a large enough degree that I'm still hated by the deep state, the media, the, you know, you name it. So that's not my ego that I influenced it. That's what they believe. Okay. I did that. You know, I've done that. I moved history. Um, <laughs> I've been a big guy. I've moved history. I enjoyed, I, I tell people I, I had a four year cheat meal and I enjoyed every day of it. I enjoyed the wine and the good food because I wasn't eat, getting fat eating Doritos. That's for sure. Mm -hmm. I enjoyed every bit of it. Now I'm over that. Now I'm doing a lot of endurance work, zone two cardio, you know, just pedaling the bike until your heart rate gets to, you know, 60 to 70% long time, you know, contemplated podcasts, spiritual journeys. You know, that's where, that's where I am now. And then I'll probably become a novelist eventually because that's where, you know, I'm being drawn. So in 50, maybe I'll have been a, a person who wrote a couple of great novels and then I'll be 50 and think, well, what's, you know, what's next. So rather than, because we do have peaks and plateaus, obviously, if you're in the same realm, you're going to have, you know, good years, bad years. For me though, it's really just about, I'm, I'm a story in a book, but I'm also the author of the story in the book and I'm writing that story.